this morning's text. I love the Jeremiah text, because what does it say? It says in no uncertain terms that we shouldn't have Sunday school. (laughs) Right? Because we will no longer teach each other or teach people about God. We will all just know God and I will write my laws on their hearts and we won't have to say, that doesn't mean that you get out of going to Sunday school this morning though, kids. Sorry. Or adults. Sorry. We still have a lot to learn. So that still doesn't mean that God hasn't written His love and His laws and His stuff, all of that on our hearts. But the interesting reading this morning, John chapter 12. There are some Greeks who went up to the festival. What festival is this? Passover. Thank you. Whoever said that, thank you. It's Passover, right? They've entered into Jerusalem. It's the final week. We're approaching Palm Sunday. We're approaching Holy Week. Jesus has entered in, and now He's here for the festival of Passover. And some Greeks are there, which is interesting to me. Have you ever tried to go someplace... And you found out that when you were trying to book a room where you were going to that place that it was really expensive for that weekend. And you had no idea why. And you're looking at these rooms and you've you got to be careful what you tell me where it winds up in a sermon. So Ryan told me a story yesterday about his wife who's going someplace this coming weekend. And they were looking for hotel rooms in New Orleans. And the rooms were very expensive for this weekend. They were like, what in the world? This is the only weekend we can go. We've got to do something. So they went ahead and booked the, the rooms. Well, they found out that it's jazz festival in New Orleans. (laughs) You wouldn't choose if you didn't want to go to the Jazz Festival. You would not choose to go to New Orleans the weekend or the week of Jazz Festival, right? Unless you really just like jazz and by coincidence you happen to book one of those weekends. It's kind of like these Greeks coming to Jerusalem during Passover. Why are these Greeks in Jerusalem during Passover? And they come to Philip and they say, Sir, we want to see Jesus. And I read this every time I read this. Y'all aren't going to be able to see this, but I'll have it for you to look at later. It always reminds me of this little cartoon. It's a far side cartoon. It's a woman standing at a door and there's two men standing there in white shirts with ties and they've got books in their hands down next to them. They're probably Bibles. You assume that they're Bibles. And they say, Have you found Jesus? Well, if you look at the picture real close, Jesus is standing over here behind the curtains. <laughs> Makes me wonder, you know, they said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Is Jesus hiding? Is he, is he not in plain sight for everybody to see? What, I mean, what's going on here? And then I read a little bit further and I'm, and I'm interested to see that Philip was a Lutheran. Right? Philip was one of the very first people who met Jesus and knew who he was. Jesus called him and Philip went and found Nathanael underneath the tree, right? Earlier in the Gospel of John, read it earlier. Like chapter 1, 2, someplace up there in the beginning of John. Philip sees Jesus and knows who he is. And he goes and finds Nathanael sitting under the tree and he brings, goes to Nathanael and says, Come, we found the Messiah. We found the one who's going to who lead us. We found the one that the Old Testament told us about. And Nathaniel says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Anything? And Jesus has this exchange with Nathaniel about how he saw him sitting under the tree and how they're going to do greater things. And now Philip, though, when this Greek comes to him, after he's been walking with Jesus now for three years, Philip decides when somebody comes to him and says, Sir, I want to see Jesus. Rather than just taking these guys over to see Jesus, he has to go to Andrew and say, "Um, we need to have a committee about these people who want to come and see Jesus. You know, I'm not sure if we should bring them or not. You know, so maybe we should talk about this for a minute. Right? Philip and Andrew, good Lutherans. They got to do something in ministry, so we form a committee. Right? (laughs) Right? Or Presbyterians. Or Methodists. Or insert denomination of choice here, right? I mean, it's like, all of a sudden he's turned into this person who has to start discussing these things. Why do you have to talk about it? If somebody came up to you and said, show me Jesus, would you go, oh, give me a minute, i got to go get some people together so we can talk about this. I hope not. But what do we do? What would you do if somebody walked in here on Sunday morning and said, show me Jesus? 
Show me Jesus. For some congregations that have pulpits, you know, we don't have a pulpit, we have this lectern here, but some congregations that have pulpits on the inside of the pulpit, if they let you go into it, they have written on the inside of the pulpit where the preacher stands every Sunday morning, this verse printed. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Because that's really what the Gospel of John is all about. Helping us to see Jesus and understand who Jesus is. What do we do to help others see Jesus? And then after Philip and Andrew finally decide that, yes, this is something that we probably should go to Jesus and say, you know, these people want to see you, they go to Jesus and Jesus gives them a perfect answer to their question, right? Although we don't really know what their question is. The Greeks go to Philip and say, sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip goes to Andrew Philip and Andrew go to Jesus and they say, we don't know. But Jesus replies, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. What about these people that want to see you, Jesus? But anyone who loves their life here will lose it and anyone who hates their life in this world will gain a life for all of eternity. Whoever loves their lives will lose it. But whoever hates their lives... It's an interesting word there, hate. It's a very powerful word, actually. How many of you hate your life? Good. (laughs) That's good. We shouldn't hate our lives. What does Jesus mean here when he says, if you don't hate... Your life. Right? There are some times when we're younger, or maybe even when you're older, or maybe even right now, as you sit here in this pew this morning wondering, I really wish things in my life were different. I really wish that the circumstances weren't what they are for me right now, right here in this place. I really wish that things could be different. I really hate the place and the, and the, the situations that I'm in. Is that what Jesus means? That we're supposed to hate what we have and who we are and how we live? I don't think that's what Jesus meant. If we don't hate our lives, we can't follow Jesus. It made me think of another thing that maybe we, you've all heard or maybe not. Does anybody know the Marine Corps code? Three words. No? Not simple for Davis. Say it louder. Core. God, country, core. Right? That's that's the order of your service. Right. God, country, core. There's notice there's no self in any of those. That's what Jesus is telling us. It's not about us hating our lives, because I know no Marines that hate the fact that they serve in the core. You know, I know several Marines and I know several ex Marines. I know several ex Marines. I don't know several Marines, but I know several ex Marines. And they all still speak very highly of the service that they give and the fact that they are still Marines. You're never an ex-Marine, right? It's about who we serve and how we serve them. It's not about ourselves. That's what Jesus is telling us this morning. It's not about us making ourselves higher. It's not about us building ourselves up. It's not about us making our way in life. It's about us living our lives for something other than ourselves, something outside of ourselves. For God... Alone is where our service should lie. God, in turn, then will help us to serve others. And then maybe number three could be self. But I don't even know if self gets in there at all. Because if we truly take care of the other, then the other is going to be taking care of who? Us. Right? It's this wonderful circle. 
where if God takes care of me and I take care of you and God takes care of you, then you take care of me. It's all about us showing Jesus to others. It's not about us building ourselves us ourselves up. It's about us building up the body of Christ and living out a life of love that shows forth what we've been given. Enough so that everyone else can see that and know that they can have that too because of what Christ went and did on this cross for each and every one of us. Giving himself up and dying for us with none of us absolutely deserve it. To show us the love that God has for each and every one of us. So what do you do to show Jesus to others? And what would you do if someone came to you and said, Show me Jesus. So empowered by God through the love that He's given to you, I ask you to go. Not yet. But when we're done, and after Ryan and Maria get a chance to talk to you, go out of these doors and show them Jesus.